Welcome to the show, Neat. How are you? I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm awesome. And what a pleasure it is to talk to you because you sort of reached out to us with the last podcast that's gone up and we're talking, whoa, I'm getting so much feedback, Neat, about the the musical, I Should Be So Lucky, because I suppose the conversation we had wasn't as flattering as some people would like. But your message came through and it was a little bit different because it wasn't so much about I Should Be So Lucky, the musical. You said to me something that grabbed my attention, as it would. You said, I've actually written a Kylie musical myself. Uh, yes, that's, that's pretty right. amazing. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Tell us about it. What did you What did you write? And and I understand it's even been performed once. Yes, um, it it came about as an idea that I had. I, I had gone ca- through cancer at the same time as Kylie went through cancer, oh. and the same treatments. Uh, and I wanted to exercise during my treatment, and while I I was out running. I would play Kylie music because, I mean, Kylie, you know, she's been my hero uh, and my idol for most of my life since Neighbours. Uh, so oh, sorry, can music... we just take a moment here, Neat? Mm-hmm. Let's reach out our knuckles. Let's do a knuckle bump. You and I, t- you and I together since okay. 1986, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. or thereabouts. Mm-hmm. Lifetime of Kylie. Mm-hmm. I can feel you on that. So you're going through treatment and she's – lifting your spirit so to speak with her the positivity of her music absolutely yes Mm. and and while I was running I would do little scenes in my head with all of her music so if a song came on I, I would I would think of a wee scene around these songs and knit them together as, as a little play uh, and I did that for fun and it, it wasn't till later on I thought these are actually wee scenes that could be part of a, a bigger thing, a, a musical, a story. Uh, so that's how the, the idea of your disco needs you, the musical, uh, was born. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. So we all do it. Like when we listen to a Kylie song, particularly before the video clip comes out, I create my own little visuals and possibly yes. a little story. So yes. it sounds like that's what you were doing, but then you somehow d- – went a step further than the rest of us you stitch, <laughs> stitch them together I did I found that what I'd started doing was inventing characters that I thought oh well that song fits that character that's that collection of songs fits another character and I thought these characters could all come together uh, so I decided to to write a sort of an over umbrella sort of theme that uh, Grace, this uh, dance club owner, was desperate to find money to keep her dance class going because it was falling apart and she was going to be evicted from her studio if she didn't actually bring some money in. Um, So I thought, bring all these characters together that I'd invented, four other characters, together in this dance class. Uh, As I understand it. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. As I as I understand it, it's it's the four characters are four uh, female characters. Yeah. I'm yeah. imagining that was quite deliberate because of what you were going through yes. and cancer and a cancer that affects women yes. and uh, the the Kylie factor that was happening at the time as well. So these four characters, what do they do in your disco needs you? Do they sort of collaborate to save the dance school, do they? Yeah, they, they do. And and also each of their own problems gets addressed uh, through working with each other and helping each other. Because um, Emmy, Emmy's a reflection of myself, who was going through breast cancer treatment uh, and found the advert for the dance class so that she could carry on exercising uh, throughout her treatment. Uh, Sophie, another character, she'd lost her job, lost her identity and her confidence. Uh, And her husband was an alcoholic, so she was desperate for something to fill her loneliness void and give her confidence back. Uh, And uh, Rosie, she'd broken up with her long-term girlfriend uh, who told her she couldn't find love in a room full of women. So she felt it was was an opportunity 
to prove her girlfriend wrong. Uh, and Jan, uh, she'd been with the, the class Dance Graceful since the beginning. Uh, she'd also been with her boyfriend since the beginning of time, she felt. Uh, and she felt that his overprotectiveness was suffocating her. Uh, but it's better she... the devil you know, right? Exactly, exactly. How did you know? How did you know that was her song? Oh, my goodness. I know Kylie's catalogue so well, Nate. <laughs> you did, and, and plus, I, I must admit, you... you uh, Look, this is going to sound really strange, and I I apologise if, if, if it's creepy in advance. You've got the most beautiful spirit. I'm I'm really vibing with this conversation, and we oh, only just you. connected five minutes thank before. You. So yeah, I'm feeling this musical coming together. Um, yes. Four different story, well, five storylines. The four yes. individual women's stories, and then the one about saving the dance school. Yes. And is it dialogue and music together? Is that how? It yes. Works? Yes, it is. And actually, Kylie's songs are the dialogue as well. So I wanted to use her songs seamlessly as dialogue. You know how you get some musicals where they they do their dialogue and then they come out and sing a song and it's not relative to what they're they're talking about. So you almost turn some of her lyrics into poetry, which then continue into song almost. Yes, Exactly right. that, exactly mm, that, Tim. <laughs> wow. Now, I understand that you approached um, yeah. people in Kylie's camp about, because she, we all know, if all, all Kylie fans know that she's been working on a musical for many years. It seems to have stalled. Yes. I yes. Should Be So Lucky the Musical is unrelated, I can confirm, yes. from the one that she's been working on. Yes, Did you reach out to right. Kylie's camp and what happened? Oh, yes, yes, frequently. <laughs> And I had many conversations with them. They were very, very helpful um, to let me know what I could do and what I couldn't do. Um, so, yes, uh, it was all very, very positive. Um, she she did say that she was, you know, happy to let it go ahead. She couldn't endorse it because she was doing her own musical, as you say. She was writing her own. So she couldn't endorse it in any way, but she was very supportive of it. Um, but when you I, say she was supportive of it, because listeners won't know yet, but I know because I just quickly read your bio you staged it was it for charity yes. is it yes. right Nate? Yes, yeah, we staged yeah. it in 2014 for a breast cancer charity uh, mm. to raise funds and awareness, um, mainly because during the bl- break we had a, a nurse uh, do a self-examination um, talks, quite funny, on a pl- pair of plastic boobs oh. and oh my goodness, it went down so well, um, you know, so again, we'd raised awareness as well as raise funds for the charities, the two charities that were involved. We put on five shows and every single show had a standing ovation. And you did it five times? Five wow. times. And okay. it was sold out. Uh, and, and we had, you know, um, uh, we did have a PRS license for a musical, dramatical uh, musical, uh, which was a particular license to allow us to do it for a set amount of shows. Uh, so that gave us, the, you know, the, the legal opportunity to stage it. Yeah, uh, that and permission what, you needed, yeah, right? Yeah, and so. And Kylie indirectly had given her blessing to this. Yes, uh, certainly our manager said, you know, good luck with it. We, we hope it all goes well and they were happy to support that. But as I say, Kylie could not say that she endorsed it in any way because it wasn't what she was going to be doing, you know. I mean, I can understand that entirely if Kylie said, oh, yes, I endorse that, and then everybody thinks, oh, this is the Ki- the real Kylie musical. <laughs> you would have <laughs> Which, had to move you know, to a bigger venue as well. Oh, yeah, we definitely would. <laughs> <laughs> wow, neat. What a great little story to come out of our review of the I Should Be So Lucky. Um, podcast. I've got to ask, a lot of blood, sweat and tears goes into Mm. writing something like that too. I mean, it sounds like you had the ideas, but sitting down and constructing it and then planning it in real time on the stage, a lot of of effort. (laughs) Oh, we had an amazing team. We had an amazing production team. Everybody was extremely supportive. We workshopped it. Uh, we worked on it for a year before we actually staged it. Uh, and then when we did stage it, we couldn't. It was as if fate brought everything together. Uh, you know, we had. Uh, do you remember Tim Noble, Kylie's 
choreographer from yes. a while back. Yeah. Yes. He came he came in and did some of the choreography oh, for it. Oh stop it. That's oh, yeah. amazing. Oh my god. It, it was it was honestly and every sort of dance sequence was like watching a Kylie video, you know. It was just oh. it, it, it made me cry every time I watched it, you know. Oh, you're giving me little goosebumps. I wish I had been there. I wish I had oh, been there. It was fantastic. It really was. And I'd like to do it again. I mean, I have been thinking maybe the 10 year anniversary. <laughs> uh, so that's Where was it staged, year. Nate, for those in the UK? Where was it staged? It was staged at the Mitchell Theatre in Glasgow. Right. Oh, in Glasgow. On, yes, right. in October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, uh, October 2014. Oh, wonderful. Uh, so, and as I say, we were sold out. We, every single performance was sold out. And I honestly expected people to say, oh, that was rubbish or that was amateur. But the, the reviews, we actually did an evaluation as well. And people had said things like, Oh, I didn't expect that. That that could be on Broadway. That was so professional. Uh, that that made me laugh, cry, and everything. It was everything a musical you wanted to do, you know. So I was really, really surprised at the the reception that we got. Congratulations, <laughs> Nate. Congratulations, thank and thank you so much for telling us about it. Now I understand I, uh, your disco needs you of a musical that you wrote. Yes. People can read it, can't they, online yes, somehow? Yes, yes. Tell they us about read- that. Yes, um, the actual, I've put the script into a, a graphical musical. So you've got pictures from the actual musical oh, yeah. on it telling the story. Um, obviously, I couldn't use the lyrics from the songs because they're copyright protected, but I changed the dialogue so that you could understand what I was getting out of the song. Right. Uh, and it's also linked to a Spotify playlist so that you can actually link directly to the, the music in its order uh, and, and hear what we were trying to say. Because, I mean, songs like, um, you know, you know, the, the ballad type songs uh, that we that would normally have been fast songs, we slowed it down. Um, I think one of the, the biggest scenes for me, I felt uh, that the Please Stay the song was slowed right down to a ballad. Oh, beautiful. Uh, and it was it, it, honestly, it would it would make you cry. It really, it really, really would. They were almost going to do that for the Abbey Road sessions too. Yes, mm, yes, exactly. And in happen. fact, I used Abbey Road sessions to show I should be so lucky. Yes, that that was yes. a duet um, between the two main men in the show, but each on separate parts of the stage talking about their own experiences. And wow. that was slow and beautiful and had tears in everybody's eyes. It was absolutely lovely. That is amazing. So it sounds like it was really, you know, it can be, it was tender as well as uplifting, which is it probably was. not surprising because as a person, that's exactly what you were going through at the time, right? <laughs> it, yeah. it was, yeah. Neat, if people want to reach you on mm-hmm. socials, can they? Oh, yes. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Tell um, people you, where you they can, can find me. you. It's I'm neat. I'm on I'm on Facebook um, as Neat A Nielsen, and that's N E E T A N E I L S O N. So it's Neat A Nielsen on Facebook. Beautiful, and we'll try to put a link in the description as well. Neat, thank you for telling us all about it. What a what a beautiful little gem to fall out of. By the way, the, the severe backlash that we're receiving as we speak. I don't know if you yeah. could hear my phone pinging there. That's a lot of people <laughs> abusing us. Oh, I, I should be so lucky for music. Oh, well, no. I, I oh. didn't even think about it, to be honest. Uh. We just did this podcast and we had a conversation with Lee, who happened to go, and he just gave his honest thoughts. He wasn't trying yes. to slag it off. But, um, yeah, but obviously <laughs> a lot of people have put a lot of effort into it. So yeah. I sort of I'm respect that to some it. people are upset. You're going, are you? <laughs> oh, yes. When it comes to Glasgow, I'm definitely going to go and see it. It's something I'm looking forward to. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, I keep hoping that one day Kylie will reach out and say, I'll have yours after all. <laughs> you know? um, because it's exactly. still there. Exactly. Well, her it's still right? there. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's right. It. Maybe just pick up and develop yours and <laughs> there you go. Lovely. Ready to go. Be lovely. <laughs> I do dream that. <laughs> oh, we all dream that Kylie will reach out to us in <laughs> different do. ways and uh, in different intensities, Neat. Um, <laughs> it's been lovely <laughs> talking to you, though. Thanks Thank for reaching you. out. Thank you so much. Thank you.